ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आम सुनील वर्मा एंड विस्मी सरबजीत कौर द हेडलाइंस फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारामन सेज इंडिया हैज सेट अ ग्लोबल बेंच मार्क इन डिजिटाइजेशन इंडिया कॉल्स फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड सिंप्लीफिकेशन ऑफ इंटरनेशनल टैक्सेशन रूल्स वर्ल्ड बैंक वॉन्स दैट ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी इज डेंजरसली क्लोज टू अ रिसेशन आई एम एफ सेज इंडिया इज अ ब्राइट स्पॉट ऑन द डार्क होराइजन President Draupadi Murmu to inaugurate and lay foundation stones of various development projects in Assam today. All India Conference of Law Ministers and Law Secretaries to begin today in Ekta Nagar, Gujarat. Jammu and Kashmir government orders premature retirement of 36 police personnel for involvement in corruption and criminal activities. In shooting India bags bronze medal at ISSF World Championship in Cairo Egypt and in women's cricket India to face Sri Lanka in summit clash of T20 Asia Cup in Bangladesh tomorrow Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said that India is setting the global benchmarks on the digital front and there is a sense of confidence in the country that it will be able to face geopolitical and economic uncertainties and still perform Ms Sitaraman made these remarks at an event at Johns Hopkins University in Washington on the topic technology finance and governance the multiplier effect answering a question on India's economic prospects in the face of global uncertainty Ms Sitaraman said India is now setting global standards and countries around the world recognize the scale of achievement India has actually set benchmarks there are countries which recognize that this scale of achievement is a absolute watertight proof that it is unfailing over the years over the numbers and the size of the expansion that it is dealing we actually have set global benchmarks in the way in which digital economy and the services that digital platforms can do for us and that itself for india is a very big confidence booster the finance minister said the indian economy's revival is on a sustained path and it will continue to be resilient in the face of a possible global recession explaining the modi government's approach she said good governance in india is being achieved by the use of technology and a certain transformation has happened due to ramping up the capacity for digitalization of the economy she said that a certain transformation has happened in india in the recent past and people have adapted to the change with great ease earlier ms sitaraman participated in the second day of the ongoing g20 finance ministers and central bank governors meetings in washington dc speaking at the event the finance minister called for investments in infrastructure and simplification of international taxation rules she stressed the need to mobilize finance at sub national level for inclusive and quality infrastructure ms sitaraman said international tax rules should be simple administrable and generate meaningful revenue in developing countries the finance minister also called for an effective tax reporting regime and information exchange between jurisdictions for crypto assets to combat offshore tax evasion ms sitaraman said India views the hosting of the G20 presidency as an opportunity as well as a responsibility. The minister said rebuilding trust in multilateralism is at the core of India's thinking. Ms. Sita Raman said G20 finance ministers have always come together in the harshest global situations. She urged the finance ministers and central bank governors to continue working together with this sense of solidarity. World Bank president David Malpass has warned that the global economy is dangerously close to a recession and called for targeted support for the poor. He said the World Bank has lowered 2023 growth forecast from 3% to 1.9% for global growth. He said that's dangerously close to a world recession. Mr. Malpass was talking to reporters on the sidelines of the annual meeting of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund in Washington. He said all problems such as inflation 
rise in interest rates and cut off of capital flows to the developing world have hit the poor hard. He said these problems pose a huge challenge for the World Bank. Mr. Malpa said we are focused on helping people get ahead in developing countries. International Monetary Fund IMF has described India as a bright spot on the dark horizon. IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva said that India deserves to be called a bright spot on this otherwise dark horizon because it has been a fast-growing economy even during these difficult times. She was replying to a question on her expectations from India just days before it takes over the presidency of G20. Ms. Georgieva was talking to reporters on the sidelines of the IMF and World Bank annual meetings in Washington. She said, most importantly, India's growth is underpinned by structural reforms. IMF's Deputy Director of Fiscal Affairs Department, Palio Mario, had earlier termed Narendra Modi government's direct benefit transfer scheme as logistical marvel, considering the sheer size of the country. Morio had said that there is a lot to learn from India's DBT scheme that seeks to help people who are at low income levels. President Draupadi Murmu will inaugurate and lay foundation stones of various development projects in Assam today. These projects belong to Assam government and union ministries of road transport and highways, petroleum and natural gas and railways. These include launch of model Anganwadi centers with modern facilities and mission Sobhagya and inauguration of rail-fed petroleum storage depot of Indian Oil Corporation Limited at Moinurbad Silchar. The president is on a two-day visit to Assam. More details from our correspondent. President Draupadi Murmu on the second day of our visit to the state will virtually inaugurate 3,000 model Angarwadi centers and will also launch the mission Sobhagya from Srimanta Shankardev Kalakshetra in Guwahati today. The president will lay the foundation stone for 100 model secondary schools for the tea garden areas and one Indian oil limited's rail fit petroleum storage depot at Moinarbant in Silsar including a modern cargo come coaching terminal at Agyathuri near Guwahati, virtually from the same event. Besides, the President will also inaugurate several sections of national highways in the state and will flag off passenger trains from Guwahati to Sokhuvi in Nagaland via landing and Guwahati to Mendibatha in Meghalaya. Today afternoon, the President will leave for New Delhi. Amin al Guwahati. Yesterday, President Murmu inaugurated supercomputer facility Param Kamrup and Laboratory for the design and development of high-power microwave components at the Indian Institute of Technology at Guwahati. The Param Kamrup, one of its kind supercomputer in the northeast region, is installed under the National Supercomputing Mission. Addressing the gathering, the President urged the science and technology institutes of the country to promote greater research and development so that India can be a leader in technological innovations beneficial for the larger good of the society. The President urged IIT Gubahati to encourage innovations, work towards indigenization in cutting-edge technologies, provide skill development avenues and be a forerunner in making the country Atmanirbhar. The institute should encourage innovations, work towards indigenization in cutting edge technologies, provide skill development, avenues, and be a forerunner in making our country Atmanirbhar. I am delighted to have inaugurated facilities which will be instrumental in technological advancement and help meet future requirements of the country in the fields of healthcare, defense, education, and other areas. On the occasion, President Murmu also virtually inaugurated the medical college and hospital at Dubri and laid the foundation stones for two zonal institutes of National Institute of Virology at Dibrugar in Assam and at Jabalpur in Madhya Pradesh. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar, who is on a maiden visit to Gujarat, will visit Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar today. Mr. Dhankar will visit Sabarmati Gandhi Ashram in Ahmedabad this morning. He will then address a program on Excellence in Higher Education at Gujarat National Law University. The Vice President will virtually dedicate and lay the foundation stone of various projects on the occasion. Governor of Gujarat, Acharya Devavrat, and Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel 
will be present at the event. We have more from our correspondent. During the program at Gandhinagar, Vice President will virtually launch the Center of Excellence in Drone Technology at Ahmedabad based Institute of Infrastructure Technology Research and Management. He will also felicitate a few startups and entrepreneurs in the field of legal and environment domain and recently recruited judges of state judiciary. The Vice President will virtually launch the Wi Fi facility at all the government and grant in aid colleges of higher and technical education campuses. Scholarships to beneficiaries of Mukhya Mantri Yuva Swavalavan Yojana will also be disbursed on the occasion. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that Himachal Pradesh today realizes the strength of the double engine government, which has doubled the pace of development in the state. The Prime Minister was addressing the gathering after laying the foundation stone of two hydropower projects and launching Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana PMGSY 3 in Chamba in Himachal Pradesh yesterday. Highlighting the development in the last eight years, the Prime Minister said, a Mahayagya of rapid development is going on in the hilly areas, in the inaccessible areas, in the tribal areas, all over the country. He asserted that the next 25 years are very crucial for 130 crore Indians. He added, India's Azadi Kambit Kal has begun, during which they have to accomplish the goal of making India a developed country. Bharat ki Azadi Kambit Kal shuru ho chuka hai, jis mein hume विकसित भारत का संकल्प पूरा कर रहा है एक एक हिंदुस्तानी का संकल्प अब पूरा करके रहना है आने वाले कुछ महीनों में हिमाचल की स्थापना के भी 75 वर्ष पूरे होने वाले हैं यानी जब देश की आजादी के 100 साल होंगे तो हिमाचल भी अपनी स्थापना के 100 वर्ष पूरे कर रहा होगा इसलिए आने वाले 25 वर्षों का एक एक दिन एक एक पल हम सब के लिए सभी देशवासियों के लिए और हिमाचल के लोगों के लिए विशेष रूप से बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है साइटिंग द एग्जांपल ऑफ वोकल फॉर लोकल द प्राइम मिनिस्टर अप्रिशिएटेड द वुमेन एसोसिएटेड विद सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स ड्यू टू देयर इंपेटस टू एफर्ट्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट टू प्रमोट लोकल प्रोडक्ट्स द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इंफॉर्म्ड दैट दीस प्रोडक्ट्स आर आल्सो बीइंग प्रमोटेड अंडर the one district one product scheme earlier in the day the prime minister laid the foundation stone of bulk drug park and dedicated the indian institute of information technology iiit una to the nation mr modi also flagged off the inaugural run of the new vande bharat express from amb andora in una to new delhi speaking on the occasion the prime minister said the decision to bring vande bharat to himachal pradesh also shows the priority that the government accords to the state. मुझे अंब अंदोरा से लेकर दिल्ली तक की भारत की चौथी बंदे भारत ट्रेन को हरी झंडी दिखाने का सौभाग्य मिला। ये भी सोचिए देश में चौथी बंदे भारत ट्रेन इतना बड़ा हिंदुस्तान इतने बड़े-बड़े शहर लेकिन चौथी ट्रेन अगर मिली तो मेरे हिमाचल को मिल गई You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says India has set a global benchmark in digitization India calls for investments in infrastructure and simplification of international taxation rules World Bank warns that global economy is dangerously close to a recession. IMF says India is a bright spot on the dark horizon. President Draupadi Murmu to inaugurate and lay foundation stones of various development projects in Assam today. All India Conference of Law Ministers and Law Secretaries to begin today in Ektanagar, Gujarat. Jammu and Kashmir government orders premature retirement of 36 police personnel for involvement in corruption and criminal activities. In shooting, India bags bronze medal at ISSF World Championship in Cairo, Egypt. And in women's cricket, India to face Sri Lanka in summit clash of T20 Asia Cup in Bangladesh tomorrow. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. I am India. Look at me. Know my name. We're one of the most mega diverse countries on this planet. Our weddings, our fashion statements, they're all inspired by our silver screen heroes and heroines. 
for 75 years young India. What we are really going to see India become is a powerhouse. India 2.0. The journey of India from 14th October every Friday at 7 p.m. in Hindi and 10 p.m. in English on DD National. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लॉ एंड जस्टिस इज ऑर्गेनाइजिंग एंड ऑल इंडिया कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ लॉ मिनिस्टर्स एंड लॉ सेक्रेटरीज फ्रॉम टुडे इन एकता नगर गुजरात लॉ मिनिस्टर्स एंड लॉ सेक्रेटरीज फ्रॉम स्टेट्स एंड यूनियन टेरिटरीज विल पार्टिसिपेट इन द थ्री डे लॉन्ग कॉन्फ्रेंस द की नॉट एड्रेस विल बी डिलीवर्ड बाई यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ लॉ एंड जस्टिस किरण रिजिजू टुमारो Ministry of Law and Justice said this initiative will provide a forum for discussion on a variety of topics relating to India's legal system so that policy makers may develop a road map for the country's future. A 3-day international conference on sustainable agricultural innovations for resilient agri-food systems commenced in Jammu yesterday. The conference is being organized by Indian Ecological Society in collaboration with Sheri Kashmir University of Agricultural Sciences and Technology SKUAST of Jammu Union Minister Dr Jitendra Singh was a chief guest on the occasion in his inaugural address Dr Jitendra Singh stressed on working collaboratively and organizing the events in collaboration with industries and other stakeholders Jammu and Kashmir government has prematurely retired 36 police personnel on charges of their involvement in corruption and criminal activities. These personnel performed their duties in ways which were unbecoming of public servants and in violation of the established code of conduct. These employees were found involved in illegal activities, remained unauthorizedly absent from duties for a considerable period, underperformed, penalized in departmental inquiries and some of them were found involved in corruption cases facing serious criminal charges and had doubtful integrity. As, part, as per the recommendations of the review committee, the performance of these employees was found unsatisfactory and their continuation in the government service was found against public interest. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for crores of people across the country. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series, Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saath. It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. In today's episode, we bring you the story of India's rising stature on global stage. India's stature on the global stage has grown significantly and the world expects more from the country. Colonialism had reduced India to one of the poorest nations, but today it is the fifth biggest economy in the world. India has always prioritized cooperation over conflict, coexistence over competition, sharing over receiving, plurality over hegemony, and shared prosperity over zero-sum notions of growth. The country believes in the promise of diplomacy and international cooperation. India is firm on a zero-tolerance approach to cross-border terrorism. On all global platforms, India has reiterated that there is no justification for any act of terrorism. Ever since Narendra Modi assumed office as the Prime Minister of India, he has not only enhanced India's position at a global level, but also left a huge impact on world leaders. When COVID-19 pandemic posed an unprecedented challenge before the world, India played a significant role in addressing many issues with greater urgency. Prime Minister Modi said India's COVID vaccine Maitri program has helped more than a hundred nations. Corona jaisi vaisvik mahamari mein hum sabne aur dunya ne 
भारत का सामर्थ्य देखा है सदी की इस सबसे बड़ी आपदा में ग्लोबल सप्लाई चेन्स में इतना बड़ा डिस्ट्रप्शन हुआ फिर युद्ध ने भी इस संकट को और बढ़ा दिया इन सब के बीच भी भारत आज ग्रोथ के एक बड़े केंद्र के रूप में उभर रहा है अपनी वैक्सीन तैयार की इतनी वैक्सीन बनाई भारत ने दुनिया के सौ से अधिक देशों को भी वैक्सीन भेजी है एड्रेसिंग द सेवेंटी सेवेंथ हाई लेवल सेशन ऑफ यूनाइटेड नेशन जनरल असेंबली इन न्यूयॉर्क ऑन ट्वेंटी फोर्थ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर 2022 external affairs minister dr s j shankar said that india is meeting its development targets as well as offering partnerships to nations in asia africa and latin america the minister pointed out that in its pursuit of climate action and justice india has worked with partners on the international solar alliance the one sun one world one grid initiative and the coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure this new india under the visionary and dynamic leadership of prime minister narendra modi is a confident and resurgent society its agenda for our centenary will be achieved through the five pledges that we committed to on our independence day one we are resolved to make india a developed country in the next 25 years for the world that creates more capacities for global good two we will liberate ourselves from a colonial mindset externally this means reformed multilateralism and more contemporary global governance three our rich civilizational heritage will be a source of pride and of strength this includes care and concern for the environment so ingrained in our traditional ethos four we will promote greater unity and solidarity this expresses a coming together on global issues such as terrorism pandemics or the environment and five we will instill consciousness and of duties and responsibilities this applies to nations as much as it does to citizens these five pledges affirm our age old outlook that sees the world as one family we believe that national good and global good can be entirely in harmony UN has hailed India for its thoughtful leadership and commitment to advancing high impact south south cooperation India's journey of development in the last 75 years brings forth many templates for other developing countries be it digital connectivity financial inclusion or over 2 billion vaccinations India offers scalable solutions and stands ever ready to share these solutions with other developing countries India has extended humanitarian assistance to all partners and friends be it Ukraine, Afghanistan, Myanmar, Sudan, Yemen and Sri Lanka. Azad Bharat ki baat Akashvani ke sath can be accessed on at @AIR news alerts on Twitter, news on AIR official YouTube channel, news on AIR app, Facebook and Instagram handles. So tune in to All India Radio News for Azad Bharat ki baat Akashvani ke saath The second episode of Voter Awareness Program Matadata Junction will be broadcast today by All India Radio from 7:25 to 7:40 pm on 100.1 FM Gold Channel The theme is The Power of One Vote Ek Vote ki Taakat Matadata Junction program is being broadcast in 23 languages across the country AIR collaborates with the Election Commission of India for broadcast of 52 episodes of 15 minutes each on FM Gold, FM Rainbow, Vivid Bharati stations and primary channels of AIR. जब जुड़े लोग से लोग वोट से वोट बने तब लोकतंत्र का सिस्टम लोकतंत्र का जब जुड़े लोग से लोग वोट से वोट बने तब लोकतंत्र का सिस्टम लोकतंत्र का सिस्टम मतदाता जुड़ते जाए बने तब ऐसा नया कनेक्शन ऐसा नया कनेक्शन मतदाता जुड़ते जाए बने तब ऐसा नया कनेक्शन मतदाता संसार है शायद 
Minister of State for External Affairs Minakshi Lekhi has slammed Pakistan for raising the Kashmir issue at an international forum while turning a blind eye towards the persecution of minorities within its own territories. In a statement at the 6th Summit of Con- Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia, CICA, at Astana in Kazakhstan yesterday, Ms. Lekhi said it is unfortunate that Pakistan has once again chosen to misuse the CICA platform to propagate false and malicious propaganda against India and distract from the theme and focus of the discussions and cooperation amongst the member states. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has conveyed his best wishes to all athletes who took part in the National Games 2022 and congratulated all those who won medals. Remarking on the grand success of the National Games this year, the Prime Minister said that the sporting infrastructure was widely appreciated by the athletes and the Games will be remembered for the focus on sustainability, including furthering awareness on recycling, reducing plastic waste and enhancing cleanliness. In shooting, India began their ISSF World Championship campaign with a bronze in the women's 25 meters pistol team junior competition in Cairo, Egypt yesterday. The trio of Isha Singh, Namia Kapoor and Vibhuti Bhatia demolished team from Germany 17-1 in the bronze medal match to get India on the medal tally on first day of the competition. In women's cricket, India will face Sri Lanka in the summit clash of T20 Asia Cup at Silhat in Bangladesh tomorrow. The final will be played tomorrow at 1 p.m. Indian time. India reached the final with a comfortable win over Thailand in the semi-final match. This is the eighth time when India secured a place in the Asia Cup's final. In the second semi-final of the tournament at the same venue, Sri Lanka defeated Pakistan by one run. And now let's take a look at the weather across the country today. National capital Delhi will have a mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between 19 and 31 degrees Celsius. Mumbai is likely to have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Jammu, Srinagar and Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky. And Leh and Gilgit will also have mainly clear sky. In the northeast, Guwahati, Shillong, Itanagar and Azol will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Imphal, Agartala, Gangtok and Kohima will also have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Temperature in these northeastern regions will vary between 16 and 35 degrees Celsius. And now an overview of today's newspapers. India abstains as UN votes to reject Russia annexation lashes out at Pakistan for raising Jammu and Kashmir, writes the Asian Age. The government's production-linked incentive scheme has helped monthly mobile phone exports hit record $1 billion in September, reports the Economic Times. Tata's Singapore Airlines in talks for merger of Air India Vistara, writes Hindustan Times. The solvent used in cough syrups made by a Sony Perth manufacturer, which caused children's deaths in Gambia, was supplied by a Delhi trader and has been traced to South Korea, reports the Tribune. The Times of India reporting that India's among the top three countries facing phishing attacks via mobile apps has given useful hints to keep your money safe, including never clicking on unknown links, sharing your personal details and installing software from unknown sources. And finally, canine hero Zoom, who was shot at twice while saving Jawans as they neutralized two terrorists in an encounter in Kashmir on October 10th, has died, reports the pioneer. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says India has set a global benchmark in digitization. India calls for investments in infrastructure and simplification of international taxation rules. World Bank warns that global economy is dangerously close to a recession. IMF says India is a bright spot on the dark horizon. President Draupadi Murmu to inaugurate and lay foundation stones of various development projects in Assam today. All India Conference of Law Ministers and Law Secretaries to begin today in Ekta Nagar, Gujarat. Jammu and Kashmir government orders premature retirement of 36 police personnel for involvement in corruption and criminal activities. In shooting, India bags bronze medal at ISSF World Championship in Cairo, Egypt. And in women's cricket, India to face Sri Lanka in summit clash of T20 Asia Cup in Bangladesh tomorrow. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.